Greetings and welcome to FreedomBookClub.com's video announcement for December 2012. My name is Ferb and I'm the managing editor of FreedomBookClub.com. And, well, here we are in our office listening to the Abyssinians. And we'll get on to it. We are going to go through the winners. So let's check that out. Alright. So, we're choosing the final, or the book of the month this month from all the runners up from 2012. Those which we will get into so if you look at our graph here. Our graph says that Operation 9-11 by Ahmed El Fiki is our winner this month with 66.7% of the vote. We can get down to the nitty gritty on this as well. Um, Operation 9-1-1 garnered 72 and 1 one thousandths of the of a share, which ended up being 66.7% of the total shares cast. So, there's that, and coming in second place was the, um, this one. The Illusion of Victory, America in World War One. Too bad for that guy. That's by Thomas Fleming. Thomas Fleming has been really nice to me, though. I'm sorry that we won't be reading this book, but I may try and read it on the side when I have the chance. Okay, so there's that. We had two other people that got votes. That would be the conscience of an anarchist and. Um, None of the above, right here. Uh, but they didn't win. But we're grateful for the people writing the books and people expressing their opinions about the books that we have up for consideration. Alright, back to me. Back to you, Jim. I'm wearing a Frank scarf. Anyway, let's look at. book. It's Operation 911 by Ahmed El Fiki, our book of the month for December 2012. Yeah, this is the product description from FPP.cc, which I can read a little better over here. Operation 911 spans a uh, Operation 911 spans from the months leading up to the attacks on September 11, 2001, until the 2003 invasion of, invasion of Iraq, and follows the lives of college students Max Nomar, the professor and his family, the Iraqi family of Sohaib, Somaya, Aisha, and Amar, as well as those who planned and carried out the attacks on that Tuesday, September 2001. So that's the product description. There haven't been any reviews that I was able to find, so if you are done reading it, when you're done reading it, why don't you go to freedombookclub.com uh, and take our little exit survey right here. Looks like we got a visitor. Come here, Mabel. You want to be on TV? And this is my lovely production assistant, Mabel. She just woke up. So we are here sharing with you. Our book of the month again is Ahmed El Fiki. Oh, look. Come here. Come here, buddy. This is Pumpkin. Our cat. Anyway, so... <laughs> um, 
I'm at LP Keys. Operation 911 is our book of the month. Let's get on to our finalists. This month, our finalists are um, The Manufacture of Madness, a Comparative Study of the Inquisition and the Mental Health Movement by Thomas Sass, the recently depart, uh, deceased Thomas Sass. Let's read a review or some blurbs that I found. The important message in Saz's book is that maybe the day is long past due when we should stop forcing ideas, moral codes, treatment, religious beliefs, and political creeds on others for their own good. We can use all the fighters of Saz's brilliance in these causes we can get. That's from Robert E. Reinert, Bulletin of the Manager Clinic. Of the thousands of books published each year in the United States, only a small por proportion represents a significant contribution to the advancement of man's understanding of man. The Manufacture of Madness is one of those rare books. It is both controversial and insightful, scandalizing and synthesizing, muckraking and seminal, disturbing and fascinating. I highly recommend this brilliant book. James M. Hensley, American Sociology. Sociological Review. A blockbuster. This is Saz at his best, driving relentlessly, writing with consummate artistry and dazzling, indeed overwhelming scholarship, and developing, varying, and orchestrating his theme into majestic proportion. It is the most important of Saz's works today, a classic of its kind. That's from David J. Vale, Hospital and Community, Community Psychiatry. It is to be hoped that the manufacture of madness will stir the psychiatric establishment into some realization of the fact that persecution of people, merely because they are different, exists as much today as it did in the 16th century. That's from Drugs and Society. Okay, so we're going to look at finalist B. Finalist B this month is... A Beautiful Anarchy by Jeffrey A. Tucker. Good. And we will, yes, that's right, Mabel, Tucker. He's a super cool guy. I can't wait to meet him someday. All right, we're going to read a review by um, the examiner. What is his name? Anyway, I subscribed to him, but I can't remember what he, oh, we'll probably say it again. Uh, I can't remember. But this is a pretty good article. A Beautiful Anarchy. In Jeffrey Tucker's latest nonfiction book describes the current world where traditional gatekeepers such as governments and corporatized media are unable to censor information through coercive monopolies. While reading the book, I noticed similarities with the futurism of Alvin and Heidi Kotler. Instead of extrapolating changes which might result from possible future changes, Tucker examines real changes resulting from current innovation, allowing the reader to draw their own conclusions. Tucker is the eternal optimist. Instead of the eternally dismal worldview of most futurists, Tucker encourages readers to become early adopters of new technology. Tucker dates modernity from the creation of the telegraph, presenting long-distance, real-time communication as the factor that unleashed human creativity, allowing for the global development of free markets and free minds. Tucker presents modernity as a process where entrepreneurs and innovators continually struggle with the gatekeepers, the governments, and other institutionalized monopolies. Tucker, no, this goes into Tucker's past, but we all know that he's uh, involved with laissez-faire books and is a former webmaster for what Ludwig von Mises Institute. Okay, so uh, that was that. And so we're going to get on to finalist C, which is New World Rising by Tom DeLorenzo.
Okay, The New World Rising, The Quest for Human Freedom in the 21st Century by Tom DeLorenzo. Not to be confused with Thomas J. DeLorenzo. Uh, this is a different Tom DeLorenzo, uh, spelled differently, and he's an admirer of Tom DeLorenzo's work, he told me, with my Google+. Plus. Anyway... New World Rising by Tom DeLorenzo. I found um, this blog, which Tom DeLorenzo has set up to sell his book. Uh, okay, and I'm going to read a review done by Wendy McElroy, a former uh, author selected by the Pokemon for her book, Triple X, A Woman's freedom to pornography or something like that. I can't remember what the subtitle of it is called Tri Triple X. New World Rising is a freewheeling delight of a book. The spinal cord of its content is hardcore freedom, but the articles spinning off are insightful, cynical, idealistic, and they are exactly what so many advocates of liberty have been muttering under our breath for, for far too long. Let's speak out loud again and let the revolution begin. And yes, in deference to Emma Goldman, we will also have a chance. I'll dance to the beat of New World Rising any day. This is from Wendy McElroy, author of The Art of Being Free. So after that, finalist C, um, New World Rising by Tom DeLorenzo. Here is finalist D. Our friend Wayne Simmons, with his book, Blue. Let's read about that. From Camvision. That's right, Camvision, Mabel. Okay, ever wondered what might happen if Blue turns people into zombies? No, me neither. Now, having read this feisty little poem, I can see that it's a question that definitely needs asking. You see, in this tale from Wayne Simmons, a flu pandemic wiped out most of civilization, and those who die coughing up their internal organs don't stay dead. Instead, they rise as cannibalistic undead and roam the streets seeking out a few survivors to satisfy their hunger. The streets in this particular tale of lurching dead are those of Belfast, Northern Ireland. The rundown council estates of those environments provide a perfectly bleak backdrop to the story. People uh, peopling the remains of this environment are those who survived the initial bout of zombie plague to serve as protagonists. They are a varied bunch and include an ex-IRA gunrunner, a retired army major, and a gun skinhead. Anyway, that's what we got from Wayne Simmons and camvision.wordpress. Oh, camvision.blogspot.com. Um, so, I want to ask you to go to freedombookclub.com and then uh, vote for your favorite book right here, which will be, choose which will be our next book of the month. That's the link right here. And then you can choose one of your favorites. I won't tell you which mine is, but you can find out where you can have an impact here. And then when you're done reading Operation 911 by Ahmed El Fiki, please go to our website, freedombookclub.com. Go to the past selections page. Then you see the book cover over here. Click on it. And then you end up over here, and then you take our little survey and you say, yeah, I finished it, or no, I didn't, and then uh, we will um, conclude the, the uh, surveys here on February 2nd and hopefully present the Book of the Year Award at Liberty Forum in New Hampshire in February 2013. So, thank you, that will be our fifth annual Book of the Year Award. So thanks for everybody who's taken the exit surveys and 
Great seeing you. Oh, by the way, we're listening to the Abyssinians, and I'll post a link to that so they don't, the uh, copyright holders don't sue me, uh, and that you can enjoy this great music as well. Thank you, and be seeing you.